Let me share that with you. For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the entire earth to strengthen those whose hearts are true to him. I'd also like to share with you a couple of pieces of scripture from the Gospel of Luke. The first one in chapter 13, verse 34. And this is Jesus lamenting over Jerusalem. Hear Jesus as he says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often I have desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. And then also in Luke chapter 19, verse 41. Again, this is Jesus weeping over Jerusalem. As he came near and saw the city, he wept over it, saying, If you, even you, had only recognized on this day the things that make for peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. And then finally, from the book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 24. And this is Paul speaking to the um, Ephesian elders. But I do not count my life of any value to myself. If only I had finished my course in the ministry that I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the good news of God's grace. Here is the reading of God's word for us this day. <coughs> As I mentioned, today we continue, actually we end our sermon series entitled Being fully engaged. During this sermon series, we have been looking at what it looks like to live a life that is fully engaged in the things that matter most. And what we have said is that the most important thing that we can be fully engaged in is our relationship with God. In the Bible, it says that God is looking around the whole world to find those whose hearts are fully committed, who are fully engaged with him. This has been our key passage throughout the entire series. You see, first and foremost, God wants us to be fully engaged with him. And then God says, he will bless and strengthen our lives if we do that. Here's the truth about life. In life, we don't get a lot out of things if we are not fully engaged in them. For instance, if I am not fully engaged in my marriage, odds are my marriage is not going to be successful. If I am not fully engaged in my career, odds are my career is going to seem as mediocre. If I am not fully engaged in the goals I have set for my life, odds are I'm, going, I'm not going to reach these goals. And if I am not fully engaged in my relationship with God, I'm not going to get much out of that either. Although we don't think much about it, the same is true about being fully engaged in our city or town. If we are not fully committed to our city, the city will never really become our home. We will never reach our full potential there. And that goes for those of you that are transplanted into this community like I have been, 
or those of you that have been here all of your life, if you are not fully committed, fully engaged into the city, the city will not reach its full potential because it won't have you fully engaged, fully a part of it. It will be less than it can be. And so today, I want to talk about being fully engaged in the city in which you live. Let me begin by asking you a question. Do you love your city? Do you love Sheboygan, Sheboygan Falls, Plymouth, or any of the other towns that you come from? You know, Je Jesus lived near a great city. In fact, he died there. He loved the city of Jerusalem. In fact, he cared so much for Jerusalem and for the people in it that he literally wept over the city, wept over the people. Are you engaged in your city, in your town? Does your heart ever break for what you see going wrong in the place where you live? The poverty, the discouraged young people, domestic issues like abuse and alcoholism, the people who aren't connected to God. Do you feel for your city as Jesus felt for his? You know, God has designed you and me in his image and has a purpose, a desire for our lives. And what is that? Well, namely two things. To love him with all that we are and to love others. And God gave us Jesus as an example to follow in this. Jesus, as he looked at the people of Jerusalem, he knew he came to love and to serve them. He knew that his purpose was to come and save them. In fact, in Philippians 2, verses 6 and 7, we can read, though he was God, referring to Jesus. He did not demand and cling to his rights as God. He made himself nothing. He took the humble position of a slave and appeared in human form. Jesus decided, friends, I will come. I will simply come and serve everyone and anyone that has need. Then in 1 John, 1 John, we are told that we are to live our lives in the same way that Jesus lived his. Jesus is our example on how God wants us to love and serve others in the city where we've been planted. But I have to tell you, I am consumed with myself. How about you? I'm just consumed with my needs, my wants. Is that true for you? Wrapped up in the me? That is often the case for us, unless unless we allow God to change our hearts, unless we allow God in to change us, to make us one who loves and serves others, we are all consumed with me, me, me. The question I have for you then is, will you allow God to change your heart so that you can serve and love as Jesus did. And you know why that's important? Because God has brought you 
to this city, to the city where you belong, so that you can impact the lives of people that you are around. God has created us anew in Christ, Christians, so that we can do the good things God planned for us long ago to do. God wants to use you and me. The question is, will you allow God to do that? God designed you so that wherever it is, wherever you are, you can do the significant thing there. You can do significant, extraordinary, life-changing, life-affirming things there. God has given you the power, the ability to accomplish great things for his kingdom so people will understand who God really is through you, where you live, in your city or town or village. The question again is, will you do that? Will you do that? I want to challenge you this morning to really think about the city or town in which you live and the people like you who call it home. What purpose does God have for you to live here? Why has God planted you in this place? What purposes does God have for you? here, now. So to be fully engaged in my city, I must first see that God has a purpose for me. Then second, I need to see the city as the people. The city isn't the buildings or the businesses or the parks. It's the people that live there. So we need to pray and ask God to make our hearts soft to the people of our city so that we don't just see the crowd, but instead we see the individuals, the real people, the real needs, the real issues that people face. And then, and then we can serve them in Jesus' name. You know, serving those who are dealing with poverty, serving those who are dealing with joblessness, serving those who are lonely, serving those who are hurting, that is what God is calling us to because that is what is important to God. And God has blessed so many, all of us, in fact, with different ways that we can give our time and we can help with those struggles that people face. Look at what Jesus said in Matthew 22. Jesus replied, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said the greatest thing you can do is love God with all that you are, but just as important is to love your neighbor. They go hand in hand. You cannot love God and hate neighbor or ignore neighbor. If you love God, you love neighbor. So that's what we have to focus on. Jesus saw people. He saw their need. And then he responded to them with love. When was the last time you saw the people who were around you and the needs that they had? Now I want you to understand, I'm not just talking about physical needs. 
I'm not just talking about dealing with poverty. That's important, very important. But there's an even more urgent need that exists in our cities and towns. And it's not a physical poverty. It's a spiritual poverty. And that leads me to the last point. We must see that God has us here for a purpose. We must see the city as the people. And then thirdly, we must see God-given opportunities to act. You see, once we open our eyes, once we see the people of our city, God will also open your eyes and your hearts to the needs of those individuals there. I want you to listen to this because this is really important. When you become a follower of Christ, every time you see a need in the life of somebody around you, and that need touches your heart, that is God <coughs> inviting you to help meet that need, to do something about it. Let me say that again. When you are a follower of Christ, and God reveals to you a need in someone's life, and that need touches you with compassion or empathy or sympathy, that is God's invitation. That's God calling you to do something about it. You don't have to wait for a lightning bolt to hit you or for God to scribble something in stone. When you feel that in your heart, when you feel moved in your heart by the need of someone, that is God speaking directly to you. Do something. And you see, God gives you opportunities every day. Every day you have opportunities to make a difference. Because every day there are people around who are lonely, who are in need in some way. But often we don't see those needs because we put blinders on, purposely many of the times, because we don't want to see. We don't want our heart touched or moved because when we feel that way and we know that God wants us to do something, it's so hard to turn away. Better not than just not see. And so we put our blinders on and we pretend that we do not notice. The most important opportunity, bar none, that God gives us is the opportunity to help someone that we know who is a long way away from God or who does not know God at all. To help them take a step closer to God. Look at what Colossians 4, 5 says. Live wisely among those who are not yet Christians. Make the most of every opportunity. You see, the problem with us isn't living among those who are not yet believers, living among those with spiritual needs. That's easy to do. The challenge for us is to live Christ-like among them and to take responsibility for the opportunities that God places in our path. In fact, the most important assignment God gives to us is this, to bring God's people to him, that they may have a relationship with him, that they may know Christ. Look at Acts 20, 24 again. It says, my life is worth nothing unless I use it for doing the work assigned by me to me by Lord Jesus. 
the work of telling others the good news of God's wonderful kindness and love. This is the Apostle Paul speaking. He says, my life will be worth nothing if I am not using my life to help others grow closer to God, telling them about God's love. He says, my life, listen to this, my life when I become a follower of Christ is worthless if I am not using it to help others find God. Now that's some strong language. What he's saying here is that sharing God's love with others is the primary task that God gives you. It's your number one assignment because it means so much to God. The people in your life who don't yet have the connection with God, God loves them. God has planted you in their lives to help them know him. I believe the reason that Jesus wept when he approached Jerusalem was for the reason that as he looked upon it, not at the buildings, not at the land, he wept because as he approached the holy city of God, Jerusalem, there were yet people in that city who didn't know God who did not have a connection with God, and he wept over that. And friends, I think he would weep today, coming into our cities and towns, knowing that he has planted us there, and yet there are people that do not know him. Consider for a moment that maybe that's why God has you here in this city, in this town. Ooh. Consider maybe that's why he has you in the neighborhood that you live in. Why he has put you with the friends that he has given you. To influence their life for God. Listen, I know it's hard to talk about faith. It's hard to talk about religion with friends and co-workers. But it is also so important, important enough that we need to get over ourselves and get on with sharing the faith. Think of the people and the co-workers and the friends and the family members that you know that are not connected to God, who are not in church anywhere. Begin praying for them. And then ask God to give you the words necessary to invite them to be a part of this church, any church. Get them excited about who God is and the story, the good news of Christ's salvation. I know it's risky. It's risky to invite a friend to come to church with you. They might say no. In reality, that's the worst thing that could happen. They might say no. But friends, what if they would say yes? And what if their eternity is changed because you took the time to pray for them and invite them? What then? <coughs> to be fully engaged in your city is to acknowledge the purposes of God for having you live there, God has created you and wants you to be used for his purposes of the kingdom. To be fully engaged in your city is to see the city as the people, not the buildings, not your job, not your home, not your neighborhood, the people. And finally, to be fully engaged in your city is to act in your city to meet the needs of the people. If we can do these three things, our cities will become cities of God, slices of heaven, God's kingdom come. Amen.